I believe that performing the bulk of our training at a low heart rate under your zone two heart rate cap is the key to success in endurance sports. So it might surprise you to hear me say that I think that there is a major problem with zone two running that is causing people to underperform, become frustrated, and rightfully give up on low heart rate running before seeing the benefits that they can achieve with it. Zone two training has become such a thing that it's even grown into a number of different forms. Maffetone method training, 80-20 training, primal endurance, or polarized training, all promoting largely the same thing. But I believe that they are all sending the wrong message. What's up, Motivator? My name is Taryn, and when real people want to accomplish something amazing in endurance sports, they choose motive training plans. Let's get into it. In a five zone training intensity model where zone one is very low exercise intensity and zone five is max effort intensity, this easy effort zone two intensity is said to be the key to health and racing success for beginners all the way through to advanced athletes. Some of the best athletes in the world spend as much as 96% of their training time under their zone two threshold. This large study of studies found that polarized training distributions where roughly 80% of athletes training was done at a low heart rate is better than training harder more of the time. And study after study after study comes to this same conclusion time and time again. So then why am I saying that zone two doesn't work? The problem we see is that all of these branded training methods, zone two training, maffetone method training, 80-20 training, primal endurance, crossfit endurance, or polarized training talk almost entirely about zone two low heart rate training being the key, so athletes focus only on that zone. We hear a lot of people say, I wanna focus strictly on zone two over the next few months, and this is the worst thing we could do for ourselves as athletes. Why zone two training works is because it builds a lot of mitochondria in your muscles. Mitochondria are the energy producers of our body, so more mitochondria should mean better performance, right? Not so fast. Those mitochondria don't just need to be there, they need to be taught how to work and they only get taught how to work by high intensity zone four and five training. This is where methods like 80-20 training, primal endurance and polarized training get it right because they promote a good chunk of time spent at this high intensity. But these methods also lead to underperformance because you don't race down in slow zone two intensity or up in zone five fast intensity. So when all we do is really low or really high intensity, we never actually learn how to race well. That's where the method we promote, the pyramidal model comes in and works so much better. The pyramidal model of training is different because instead of spending all of your time in either low or high intensity training zones, leaving our race pacing abilities underdeveloped, the pyramidal model spends a good chunk of time at this moderate pacing zone. As opposed to a strict 80-20 breakdown, a pyramidal model would look more like 75-15-10. A typical running workout from our app that we'd have in the final few months of our training plans would look like this, where we'd spend a lot of time at low intensity, but then build in a period of time slightly at or above your target race pace, developing your ability to hold that target race pace. We do this in our run training plans, our triathlon training plans, our duathlon plans, our cycling plans, and our swim run plans, because it's so important for athletes to build and refine their ability to hold their race pace really well. How you would effectively do this in your training is by spending the majority of your time in the off season and the base building season, either at very low intensity, the zones one and two, or very, very high intensity, zones four and five, developing your aerobic system and your top end speed. Then in our training plan, starting anywhere from three to six months out, depending on the distance of the race that you're training for, we start including longer and longer periods of time at and above your target race pace. This does several things. First, it allows you to develop the sensation of what race pace should feel like so that when you get into the race, you know how to use the effort level that you are able to achieve that day to dial in your best possible race. And it develops the ability for your 
your body to actually hold that race pace for a really long period of time so that you don't fade towards the end of the race. Depending on the race that you're training for, the pace and time that you'll spend at and above this race pace will be different. For somebody training for a 5K or 10K running race, it's going to be quite fast and the amount of time that you spend at and above race pace might be quite short, as little as five to 20 minutes. At the very opposite end of this training spectrum would be an Ironman athlete where they might still be doing a fairly low intensity relative to what they're capable of doing, but it's just slightly faster than their target target race pace, however they might hold it for as much as two hours. The bottom line is that you don't just want to do really high or really low intensity running, and certainly don't do just low intensity running. You want most of your training to be at the really low zone 2 intensity, then refine your top end and your race pace with all of zones 3, 4, and 5 running. How we do that exactly is for another video. If you're a beginner or age group runner, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel for weekly videos made specifically for real people looking to accomplish something amazing in endurance sports. And if you want to dive more into how to get started with zone two running properly, click the video on the screen right now and see our full guide on how to do that. Later motivators.